6 wants to make sure you and your family are prepared when the big earthquake hits our region. So our quake week continues today and tonight we're asking the experts just how you can make it out alive. It's an interesting question. The big one is expected to rock the region causing immense damage. Cole Miller takes a look at what to do when the ground starts shaking. The idea of a major earthquake is enough to scare just about anyone. There's no question about that. But experts say there are things you can do, know, and practice to be ready. And like we've said before, this is a matter of when, not if. And we want you to be as safe as you can. It will be like no experience you've ever had. An incredible force. You can have the ground shaking from four to six minutes. The Richter scale bouncing. It's the big one, rocking the Pacific Northwest. And your first instinct may be to panic. Experts, though, say remaining calm is a must. And so are three words. Three words that could save your life. Drop, cover, and hold. Felicia Heaton with the Portland Bureau of Emergency Management explains. The easiest thing you can do to protect yourself in the middle of an earthquake is find a place to drop, cover, and hold on tight. Students, drop, cover, hold. At Metro schools, it's a drill practiced every year. But people here, they like to get outside, be it downtown, a hike through the woods, or a trip to the coast. What do you do when the earth is rocking and there is no table or desk? Let's start with how you might get to any one of those places. Maybe it's your car. The best thing is just to remain as calm as you can, slow down, tap the brakes, pull over, and wait it out. Or maybe you're using public transit, say a MAX train or maybe a TriMet bus. Those operators will get you to a safe stop, avoiding any tunnels, bridges, or overpasses. And if you're out on foot strolling through downtown, Dr. Scott Burns, a professor emeritus at Portland State University, says that could pose some real threats. Downtown Portland is going to have problems because we have a lot of trees and we have a lot of buildings. That could mean crumbling old brick or glass crashing onto the streets below. Most injuries following an earthquake come from people people who are cut by broken glass or otherwise injured by falling debris. Melinda McGoldrick is with the American Red Cross Cascades region. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. So if you are out walking through, you know, your average city street and the ground starts to shake, you want to try to move away from things like power lines, trees that could fall and moving away from buildings. Now, what about the outdoors outside of the city? What should you do then? For that, we turn to Andrew Phelps. He's the director of Oregon's Office of Emergency Management. If you're out kind of in nature, provided you're not on, on a, a landslide prone area, you're going to be probably fairly safe in terms of the immediate effects of, of the earthquake. If you're out at the beach, the coast, that's where you'll really want to have a plan, as time won't be on your side. You have 20 minutes to get to high ground because there's a likelihood that the tsunami may be coming in. That's after the first round of shaking stops. And no matter where you are after the big one stops rumbling, it isn't over just yet. A lot of times in these earthquakes, we see people not being injured or killed in the initial earthquake, but the aftershocks. Your aftershocks are going to be sevens and eights, and they are just uh, going to be affecting us an awful lot. Before going back into a building, keep an eye out for a few things. You want to look for things like broken windows, uh, window frames or door frames that are no longer square. Uh, if the house isn't sitting on the foundation any longer, that's a great indication that you shouldn't go back inside that structure quickly as you can it's a lot to take in with so much going on so fast Heaton reminds us of the basics to keep you and your loved ones alive and safe cover your head as this is only a matter of when not if in order to survive the shaking what do people need to do keep in mind in order to survive the shaking uh, it's very important to have a plan and to think through what you would do because when the ground starts shaking if you've thought through your plan you've practiced drop cover and hold you're going to be a little bit calmer and you're going to be able to take some actions that will make you safe